I think a lot of what he's doing and saying is politically motivated. Uh, his vacillation over the weekend from one position to another simply indicates to me that he never established a set of core values that guides his thinking and a, a, a moral compass. So that vacillation for me is him being tossed back and forth between opinions that surround him. And that's problematic. For a leader, at some point in time, you have to have a set of internal convictions that say, okay, this is what I believe. Regardless, this is what I'm going to support. Yeah, and Reverend Burns, you know, if, if it is the case that Donald Trump does not have sort of a moral core, and he's, you know, he's not a, a you know, a church-going man. Um, he has some strange sort of weird ways of quoting the Bible. He says he never asked for forgiveness, uh, that he doesn't pray to God for forgiveness. He looks to himself. Um, and yet white evangelical voters overwhelmingly support him, 8 out of 10. And he still maintains 65 percent support among white evangelicals, and this despite only 38 percent support among everyone else. Um, as a Christian leader, how do you stand behind a man who doesn't seem to have a moral core and who just equated neo-Nazis and white nationalists with the people protesting them? Well, Joy, um, for me, and I can only speak about me and my convictions as, first of all, let me just say I honor Dr. A.R. Bernard. He is a general amongst general and a, a deep friend of mine. Uh, and he's been a blessing to my life, wise, wise leader for us, which is uh, obviously why I was extremely saddened to, to hear uh, that he uh, was resigning and stepping away completely from um, from what we are doing. And for me, it, I believe, as I shared on your show before, uh, that my support of Donald, candidate Donald Trump, now President Donald Trump, lies deeply within my desire to see our faith um, the Christian faith um, be um, center of politics again. I believe as long as we have, as Dr. Bernard stated, a seat at the table, that it is our spiritual obligation to be a voice of God um, to, the vo to the ear of the President of the United States. And for me, how do I stand behind um, even though I believe some of the opinions that you've declared are inaccurate. I don't believe he supporting neo-Nazi. Uh, I don't believe he's supporting white supremacists at all. Um, what did, and as what Dr. did you Bernard think his stated, statement meant? He has what, said them. what did you think his statement meant when he said that some of the people who were marching, I mean, they marched on a church. Um, there were people who were clergy who were beaten by these people. Members of your faith were beaten up by these people. When he said that some of them were fine people, what did you think he meant by that? Well, you know, again, I could just speak to my personal conviction um, and my support uh, for the movement that I believe God has led. I could never abandon um, because I believe God has called me to this. Um, I can never abandon anyone um, who I believe God has chosen me as a man of God, as a Christian, and as a leader in the body of Christ to speak, thus saith the Lord, to the ear of the present. Just like I could never abandon or resign from any one of my church members who might have done a heinous crime that uh, everyone has despised. Uh, but yet, if that member of mine declared that they needed their spiritual leader to be with them, then I would do that simply because that is my job as a Christian you, leader. For me, this is not that, a political movement. But is your opinion, just to, let's stick with your opinion, do you, in your opinion, was what Donald Trump said about Charlottesville wrong? I believe that, and, and let me just answer it like this. You know, I don't have all the information that the president had. If it was me, just the information um, you know, I would have been. Uh, I would have personally trip. said stronger uh -huh. in reference to the KKK neo Nazis, but I don't have all the information. What I do know is this: it is so important. It is so important that uh, even though we despise what the KKK and the neo Nazis and all the hate groups that hate uh, um, 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 people based off of the color of the skin, we also have to examine. Even though we may stand behind the the message of Antifa and what they were and why they were protesting, we have to also look into their methodology as to how they were protesting and was it inciting violence? Could it been prevented? What are they blocking these this hate group whom we despise their First Amendment right to protest?
Again, either we change the Constitution or we stand behind the Constitution, regardless of us hating the message of the neo-Nazis and the KKK. And the president of the United States can't afford to be one-sided. He has to be the president for all people, and that includes covering the Constitution of the United States. Well, just to be, just to be accurate, um, Antifa were not the only people who were protesting, and civilians cannot block the First Amendment rights of other civilians. It's the government interfering with free speech that would, uh, you know, that would upend the First Amendment. But I want to come back to you. Dr. Bernard on this and whether what you make of this. I mean, are evangelicals willing to trade? You talked about the importance of reputation, the importance of your sort of honor. Are evangelicals trading their honor for Supreme Court nominees and anti-abortion policy? Yeah, I want to be very careful to say that there's some wonderful people on that evangelical council, people who love God, love country, and I respect them. And this is a decision that I made because I have a set of values, core values that guide my thinking and my decision making. Uh, I have a problem with continuing to support uh, anything that's going to endorse this kind of behavior that made it difficult for me as a, a black person in America to experience the fullness of American life, the American promise. The reality is that whites can easily make decisions about things that I can't yeah. because we experience two different realities when it comes to America. All right, when, 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 when drugs became, uh, when drugs went into the black neighborhood, all right, it was, it was a black problem and we were sent to jail. When drugs hit the white community, it was an American problem and they were sent to rehab and programs. There's a big difference in the realities that we experience as persons of color and what whites experience in this country. Yeah, and uh, you know, um, Pastor Burns, can you name any policies that Donald Trump has put forward um, that have helped people of color or Christians? Well, you know, I want to I want to answer um, Dr. And again, he is but a first, general. first, can you answer my general, question, and, and then you can do that? Of my respect. Uh, and absolutely going to come to that, but why it's on my mind, I want to just simply say, um, for me, um, and th again, this is my personal convention, because the question that many are asking, why am I supporting, why I'm not resigning, especially since Dr. A.R. Bernard, who is a voice among great leaders, has resigned. Um, for me, I just simply believe uh, that the blood of Jesus covers our color. I truly believe that. I believe that until we can stop focusing on the color of our skin and really start as leaders being echoing the voice of Jesus Christ that says that I am first a child of God and then I am a, a black man second or I am a, a, a white person second. I think Dr. Bernard said it in reverse. He said he was a black man first and a Christian second. I, I would so love, for me, hold on, I, I, Pastor I Burns, to, we've gone off into a completely different to, uh, discussion that you've by. taken us down. I think when you walk into a store and you get followed around, you're pretty much a black man. <laughs> but uh, I want you to answer my question if you could, please. Has Name the policies that Donald Trump has put forward that have helped black people, people of color, or Christians? Well, I believe one, number one, Neil Gorsuch is a person who is a, a pro a life. Mm -hmm. he, oh, okay. We're talking about the things that the president ran on. He's mm -hmm. a pro-life. He's standing behind um, pro-marriage. He's pro-Christian. He's pro-faith. That is a huge matter of fact. That's the number one reason why Christians and evangelicals supported the president of the United States is so that we have a, a Supreme Court justice that believes uh, in the court values so that we have as Christian people. It's 100% about abortion people. and gay marriage. That, that's it. That, that's all that matters. Well, no, that's not all that matters, but it was the number one issue uh, that why okay, Christians and evangelicals supported Can you name another policy that he has done uh, that has helped the people States. of color? Well, I think it's also important to understand uh, that the president is making it very clear uh, from his campaign and to now that the economic value of our nation is the key to raising the economic value of African Americans and all Americans in our country. I mean, we also understand um, that black people now, especially black families, is the lowest uh, net worth in America. The okay, net worth let, of a black family let, right now is between mm -hmm. five to, to, to eight thousand dollars. The net worth of a white family is between ninety-three to one hundred thirteen thousand. Right. There's a huge economic drop in, in in difference between where we are as African Americans and where the rest of America is. Okay, let and me Give, why the president has, let, since let, his presidency, has over one million jobs that has been added to our...